everyone, it's Julia, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something a little bit different. I watch a lot of YouTube videos on with artists who draw and paint in their art journals, and there's this one artist, her name is Bella Rose, and I'll link her, link her channel down below, but she recently did this video on, the, and it was an art journal page, and I thought, you know, that would work on fabric. And so I did contact her and asked her if I could kind of kind of take her idea. And she said, sure, fine. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to give her the credit and link her channel. And I hope you join me and I hope we have fun today creating on fabric. I'm starting with a piece of fabric that measures 10 inches wide by 9 and a half inches long. This is going to be a traveler's notebook sized journal. I did back this with a lightweight fusible interfacing. I want to have a little bit more body to it because I'm going to be taking it to my sewing machine and doing some free motion on it. If anyone is interested in this fabric, the reason why I picked it out is it just it's a nice background fabric. It's white so I can do almost anything with it or, or a cream color and just has lines and numbers on it. I'll see if I can find it and I'll link it if I do. This video that I was inspired by, she drew on circles. I'm, I'm gonna be putting the circles on with a free motion, with black thread. And then she went back in and she did some coloring with, I believe she used gelatos for coloring. I've decided I'm gonna use my Neocolor 2s and I'll link all the supplies down below if you're interested in wanting to try this too. And I'm going to be activating with the GAC 900 by Golden, the fabric medium. I will be using a hoop at my sewing machine to keep this taut and more stable when I'm doing my, my free motion. This is a tension hoop that I've had for a number of years. I really, I really like it for a lot of reasons. One, it's just really easy to, to to move because it's just a spring you just snap it on and it's ready to go there's no a, no screw that you have to undo I, I would like your comments if anybody uses a hoop uh, and which one is your favorite for free motion I would love to know what I don't like about it is this, this space is so small so I'll, I'll end up having to move this a few times while I'm working which isn't a, a real big deal but it also it distorts a little bit. This is not too bad. I wouldn't recommend it if you're doing a silk or that type of fabric. So please leave a comment if you've experimented with a different kind of hoop. I would I would really love to know. I'm going to be going to the, to the sewing machine. I'm going to be free motioning random circles on this. Very similar to Bella Rose's. Then I'll be back. The circles are going to be all different sizes. I'm going to be going around the circles several times because I want it to be a pronounced outline. We'll see how it works. I do have my free motion foot on. I have my feed dogs dropped. I have my stitch length set to zero. Sewing machines may vary it on your settings for free motion, so just check your instructions and, and it should, should tell you what's right for your sewing machine. When, you, when I first start, I am going to be doing a little jiggle, going back and forth, and then I'm going to cut my thread. Now notice I have my pressure foot down, and look how freely I can move this around. And that is what you want for free motion. You want to be able just to, be, to move your fabric in all sorts of directions and you do all the moving. So I'm going to be doing these circles. Some are going to be small, some are going to be big. There's going to be times when I'm just going to have to stop and think of what I'm doing because I don't have any design on here. I'm just going to be free doing this. I will have to be moving my hoop also. Now notice when I moved my hoop, I didn't have to lift up my needle at all. I just scooted it underneath and clamped it again. And now I'm ready to go. I 
hooped it and I decided I still needed a couple more over on this side. So I re-hooped it and I'm just gonna finish up here quickly. I have picked five different colors of my Neil colors. I've chosen a piece of 12 by 12 um, cardstock that's been cut down. This is really lightweight. It's not really cardstock, but it's it came from, I have the paper pad here. This is a Recollections Neon and Craft paper pad. I got the colors from this. This is going to be the card or the paper that's going to be on the inside of my my little journal. I will link up another video. I, I, I did put a video together on how I finish my fabric journals off. So I'll link that. And other things that I'm using is a scrubber brush. This is a short bristled brush that's very stiff and it works well with fabric. You can really push the paint around and push it in. I'm using my, my golden fabric medium and a lid. So I'm going to be putting a little bit of it on the lid. I have a bucket of water off camera and then I have my paint rag thing kind of sitting on my lap. So that's my setup. A little bit about this fabric medium. You do have to heat set it and you heat set it for like three to five minutes, which is a long time when you're really thinking about it. If you're doing a large project, you can also, there's instructions on the label where you can put it in your dryer to heat set it. It's sticky. It's it's weird stuff and it, I don't know what's in it. it. It might be just runny glue. I really don't know. What I'd like to do just I mean I would experiment with what works best for you I, I put a little bit on and I don't go all the way to the edge I'm gonna do a couple little circles here and then show you take my Neil colors add the color And then I go back and I add more on top. Again, trying to stay away from those edges. It it has a tendency to just to creep out. I'm, it doesn't. It's not that big a deal if it does on this kind of a project. But to let you know, and I, and I know it's it's all a combination of how much of this fabric medium you're putting on and how much is too much. What I really love about them is their translucent. You can really see, still see the fabric through them. So it's just kind of fun. It adds a fun little design. This is going to be time lapse. I'm just going to continue creating. Did you see me break my green crayons? I actually had dropped this earlier on the floor and I thought it was fine, but it apparently wasn't. So yeah, don't drop your art supplies on the floor. Another thing I wanted to say about these is, you know, I, I am getting fabric medium on the tips. And if that bothers you or if you think it's gonna hurt, you know, I, you can just scribble it off or sharpen them and that will take care of that. One other thing that in this video of Bella Rose is she colored in between with a darker color. I don't know if she used black or gray. Is this yeah, Prussian blue color that I am going to just shade in around the little circles a little bit and fill that in. And then I'm going to be doing this is going to be folded. I am putting a stamped word on here and also I think on this back part I'm just going to color in a couple of these lines just to do something fun on the back side. So that's what I'm working on next. There you can see I paint, I added the color and then took the fabric medium over the top of all of them and blended them together. Next I will be ironing this just to heat set that color. I'm going to link a video up above and down below of 
a test that I did with this fabric medium where I actually did washing in the washing machine. So you can also take a look at that and see how the color reacts to washing to a washing machine after you know after it's been heat set. So on to the ironing board and I'll be back. Everything is heat set. It did go out a little bit on the lines which goes I mean you have to experiment with how much medium you want to put on there. It's not bad. The little word saying that I'm going to be putting on is very appropriate for this and you'll see that later. I wanted to show you on the other side this goes all the way through. This is my interfacing and it actually went through onto my paper too. Be a little mindful of that. Don't do it on a good surface. My saying is color outside of the lines. This is an old stamp. I'll link it down below if I can still find it. I am using the Ranger Archival Ink which is permanent and we'll be inking this. Now doing rubber stamping on fabric is is just one of those things. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. If it isn't good the first time around, I'll just do another one. This is just a little piece of cotton, white cotton fabric. I have found that just holding it for a while and pressing it firmly will transfer the ink a little bit better. Yeah, not too bad at all. This is going to be going on somewhere. I'm going to do it and I'll show you. I'll probably go to the sewing machine and I'll outline it and stitch it in black thread. I'll be back. I am going to outline the little words with, an, with probably the pink neo color too. I'm going to do that right now. First adding the a fabric medium. And now to heat set it one more time. To finish up my journal I take a piece of cardstock, and this is quite heavy, and score it right down the middle. And this is measures eight and three fourths inch by eight and a quarter inch high. And I'm going to spray the back of this with the 505 temporary fabric adhesive. And I'm just going to lay this centered on this piece of fabric. I do have this piece of cardstock. The corners are rounded. Um, and I use the half quarter round and this is just the, the chop a dial corner chomper and I use the half inch. I notice that this is printed not quite straight so it's going to be a little bit off. Getting it as close as I can. I'll be running a line of glue and I'm just going to use tacky glue for this all the way around the edges and, and I will just be pulling this fabric up. For the corners I like to just do a couple clips. Not all the way to the cardstock but close to the cardstock. And then I will I too just glue this up and around the corners. I got everything glued into place and the corners are pressed down. Next it's onto the inside piece of cardstock. I will be spraying this also from the back side again with the 505 temporary fabric adhesive and carefully putting this into place making sure it's going the right direction, lining everything up, getting the, the middle in the middle and then I'll be top stitching going all the way around from the back, from the front side. Then my little booklet will almost be done. It'll be ready for the pages. And I'll be back and I'll be showing you what it looks like. I got the top stitching done all the way around. I did two lines. Love the inside. I like the feel of these journal covers with the fabric on the outside and the fa and the paper on the inside with that extra strength of that extra piece of cardstock in between they just feel good. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing with this one yet if I'm going to be putting mixed media watercolor paper in it or if I'll add journaling paper and different pockets and that type of thing I will be just putting a probably one single signature in it. 
But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you some inspiration of what you can do with just a background piece of fabric. And, I, and this is such a good project to start learning how to free motion. These circles are nothing's either not even round. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It all it just kind of works and turns out great. I hope you have a chance to create today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.